Welcome back to Old School Sports and our Out of the Park Baseball 24 playthrough of the Buffalo Wings. And it is time for our annual review of our team as we start planning for the offseason. And fortunately, we are beginning this 2047 to 2048 offseason from the ultimate position of strength. Uh, just won the World Series for the third time in the past four seasons. We'll have some interesting decisions to make. Uh, at the end of the last episode, I noted that our manager and bench coach had both decided to retire. We have promoted from AAA Craig Sitton to Major League Manager. He has been with our organization since 2031, uh, was our AA manager for five years, and then he has been with AAA Albany for over a decade at this point, and he's finally going to get the opportunity to manage in the major leagues. Uh, that gave us an opportunity to promote several other minor league managers who were looking for promotions to higher levels. So we're uh, still looking for a bench coach, and then we're ultimately also looking for a manager down for our rookie ball team. So hopefully we'll continue to make uh, progress with those two hiring moves in the coming weeks. As I mentioned, uh, World Series champions, and we are coming towards this offseason from a good position of strength. We had uh, the second best offense in the National League this past year with 853 runs scored. And as we often have over the last 15 or so years in this playthrough, we had the best pitching staff in the National League. And you can see we were uh, first in almost every single pitching category. So an excellent performance by the Buffalo Wings this year. But we are on to the offseason. And we'll start by taking a look at our position players. Uh, Steve Banks took over as our starting catcher this year for Juan Ramirez. And he did a solid job, hit 245 with 14 homers, 86 WRC plus, and a 2.0 war. He is still making the major league minimum next year. Ramirez finished up hot. Only three homers and a 193 batting average in 187 at-bats in the regular season. But he ended up being the World Series MVP. He was our starting catcher against left-handed pitching, and he played six games in the playoffs. Four of those were in the World Series, and he had three postseason home runs. So an outstanding World Series from Juan Ramirez. Still love his glove. He's got the same type of catcher ability as Banks, but a much better arm. But at this point, he's 29 years old, and he's a 212 career hitter, and the highest he's ever hit is 241. So the struggle to stay over the Mendoza line is real, and it is not spectacular with Mr. Ramirez. As much as I love his defense, and as much as I appreciate the fact that although he's not a great hitter, he does have an excellent eye and draws a lot of walks, he's going to be making over $8 million next year. And uh, we just put out a tutorial video on some tips for contract negotiations. If you uh, haven't seen that video yet uh, and you're interested in such things, you can definitely take a look at our tutorial playlist for OOTP. But one of the things I mentioned in that video was that when you have an arbitration-eligible player that you're unlikely to keep, instead of just not offering them arbitration, uh, see what you can get in the trade market. And there are some pretty interesting opportunities out there for Mr. Juan Ramirez. So rather than spending $8 million on him next year to be likely a backup catcher, I think we will probably do some continued research in these next few days of the offseason and see if we can perhaps... Uh, find the best package possible to move on from him, save some money, and bring some different talent into our organization. Jamari Habersham, a first baseman slash corner outfielder, picked him up in a trade with Kansas City two and a half years ago, and he had a brilliant season for us. Uh, led the league with 674 at-bats, set an all-time Buffalo Wings team record with 214 hits, also at 47 doubles, 9 triples, over 100 runs scored, hit 318 and stole 40 bases, 3.4 war. For a guy who talent-wise is probably the fourth or fifth most talented outfielder on our team, uh, an outstanding season for him. 
Our starting first baseman is Jim Reichert, the National League MVP a year ago. Quite honestly, it was kind of a down year for Riker, and that sounds crazy to say for a guy who led the league in ribbies for a second consecutive year, scored over 100 runs for a second consecutive year, and uh, had 44 home runs, although uh, he finished second this year in that total. But he did have his batting average drop by almost 50 points to 241. That said, his BABIP also dropped by 50 points to 236. That, to me, seems like an unsustainably low BABIP, so I would expect him to bounce back next year. Still put up a 118 WRC+, and as I said, he led the league in ribbies, but given how little he brings to the table in terms of his fielding ability, only a 1.4 war, and we're certainly expecting more than that from Riker going forward. Ramiro Medina uh, just signed him to a five-year contract extension. He's a guy we picked up in a trade with the Pirates almost five years ago. Has been an excellent uh, middle infielder for us. Uh, plus bat, plus speed, and a solid glove. Hit 268 this year with 23 homers, 34 doubles, 18 steals. All added up to a 111 WRC plus and a 3.7 war. And with the fact that uh, we will, or we actually already have, declined our $22 million option on Alexis Barajas, our longtime ace for next season, that basically gives us the money that uh, we just invested in that extension for Medina at an average of $22 million a year for five years. Danny Ferguson, a solid third baseman, was a player we drafted out of Delta State five years ago, and he has become a good contributor to our team. Not a superstar, uh, but you're never going to generally be able to afford superstars at every position, and Ferguson is a good, solid third baseman. Hit 268, 29 doubles, 12 homers, added up to a 101 WRC plus and a 2.9 war. He's also signed to a relatively team-friendly contract. Uh, probably still a starting third baseman for us next year, but uh, if we got to a point where he needed to move to utility role, he certainly has a contract, a glove, and a bat that would likely let him excel in that type of role for us. And now we get into the shortstops, and we've got uh, some interesting players here. The three J's, Josh Fuchs, Juan Palomo, and Jim Weisenbach. Josh Fuchs, we picked up in a trade with the Yankees uh, closing in on four years ago. Viewed him as potentially our shortstop of the future. Not sure whether that will ultimately materialize. He hit 223 for us this year, uh, but he did have 21 doubles and 11 homers, so decent gap and home run power, although his speed is not exceptional. 77 WRC+, plus, uh, but he still was above replacement level, thanks in large part to his solid glove. Uh, looking at his fielding stats, he was a bit above average in terms of his zone rating and defensive efficiency as a shortstop. So certainly in the mix next year, uh, he was our starting shortstop against right-handed pitching this year. If he's able to continue developing, get the last 10 points we think he has in home run power and the last five points that we think he has in eye and avoiding strikeouts, I still think he's a pretty interesting mix of a solid offensive player who can hit the ball out of the park along with a really good defensive player at a premium defensive position. But at 25 years old, uh, beginning to question whether he's really going to fulfill that last, those last bits of potential that we think he has. Juan Palomo was our starting shortstop against uh, lefties this year, and he ended up having a fantastic season. 295 average in 281 at-bats, 113 WRC plus, 1.6 war. Don't worry about his bat. Uh, his glove is not really a natural shortstop glove. Uh, I think in a perfect world, he's a super utility infielder. He is fragile, uh, but has not had significant injuries thus yet in his career. Um, he's a 298 hitter, over 494 major league at-bats at this point. So uh, pretty pleased with his ability to make contact and get on base 
and uh, he is versatile with his glove, certainly in the mix to be a starter somewhere for us against left-handed pitchers next year and continue to be a uh, super sub for us. Jim Weisenbach is uh, potentially a wild card in all of this. 25 years old, and he just finished his uh, last season with minor league options. So we brought him up in the month of September. Uh, he only had three at-bats, one hit, a double in those three at-bats, struck out in the other two at-bats. A batting profile that's honestly not dissimilar from Fuchs. Uh, he strikes out even more than Fuchs right now and generally struggles to make contact even more than Fuchs, uh, but he does have better gap power and a little more speed. He's also got better infield range, uh, so I really like his glove. He ended up making the postseason roster, and he was used as a defensive substitute in several games. Since he's now out of options at this point, I think uh, he probably ends up on the Major League roster next year, making the Major League minimum, likely as a bench player. But depending on what we do with Palomo, we could try him in a platoon with Fuchs. Um, he's a right-handed hitter, so he could slide into that platoon role that uh, Palomo held this year and certainly give us better fielding at short than Palomo, although I don't think his bat will be quite as adept. Turning to our outfielders, Daniel Aguayo Leal, uh, 286 at bats as a rookie this year, hit just 210, but did have 15 homers and 42 ribbies. He's a fourth or fifth outfielder for us. He's got that extreme home run power. He is a switch hitter. I don't think he's a huge part of our future. Uh, he's not as good as some of the other young players on this team, but still a guy that uh, I think is a useful player to have, particularly through these next years when he's not making much money. Arturo Casares, uh, last year's Rookie of the Year, uh, has been an all-star in each of his first two seasons in the majors. He won a gold glove a year ago. We'll find out in the coming weeks whether he wins a second gold glove. But he was uh, just as good this year as he was a year ago. 294 average, scored 100 runs, 45 doubles, 30 homers, 97 ribbies. Did not steal quite as much and was not quite as proficient on the base paths. Uh, 12 steals and 19 attempts. So that was a little disappointing, but not really too much else negative you can say about him. 129 WRC plus and a 5.1 war on the season for Mr. Casares. Juan Ramiro likely won't be back with us next year. Uh, the 35-year-old was a longtime slugger, corner outfielder for us. We picked him up in a trade as the trade deadline approached to give us some additional depth in the corner outfield spots in first base and also give us another captain personality on the team. And he was exceptional in his return. Hit 319 with nine homers and 94 at-bats, 182 WRC+. Plus. Wouldn't necessarily mind having him around as a fourth or fifth outfielder next year. He's looking for almost $8 million a year for five years, though. And with the youth that we do have um, with Aguayo Leal, Casares, Sandoval, Velasco, Toledo, and then even Habersham and Riker in the mix at those kind of first base outfield DH positions, I don't know that there's really a need for him as uh, good as he was for us. Part of the reason we might be able to move on from Ramiro is David Sandoval, uh, fifth round pick from 2043, who has really progressed rapidly through our farm system over these last couple years. Spent most of this year at AA Utica and AAA Albany, where he combined for 29 homers and 85 ribbies. Uh, did come up in September, went 0 for 7, didn't get a lot of playing time, but certainly has a batting profile that suggests he could be a pretty useful weapon against uh, right-handed pitching particularly. That is a uh, profile right here that suggests someone who should be in the lineup every day for a major league team against right-handed pitching, even if he is going to strike out a lot. Center fielder Ishmael Velasco um, missed the first month of the season, uh, recovering from an injury that he incurred during spring training. Ended up having a little bit of a down year for him, 254 average, but he still had 22 doubles, 13 homers, 20 stolen bases, uh, 93 WRC plus, definitely below his typical standard. 
He's a guy whose roster spot, honestly, in the coming years could get into a little bit of jeopardy. We own fifteen million next year, uh, but then we've got team options for the last two years of his contract. Uh, Casares conceivably could move into center field going forward, and we have him signed for the long term. I don't know that Velasco goes anywhere next year, but uh, it's possible that we move on from him uh, sometime in the medium term. He's over 30 years old now. He's been a member of our last four world championship teams, and he was the MVP of uh, the first four of the uh, the first three of those four World Series championship teams. But he didn't win World Series MVP this year, so we've proven we can win a World Series uh, without Velasco doing most of the hard work for us. And because of that, maybe we move on from him eventually. Juan Toledo, an international free agent signing from 2039, really struggled for several years in the lowest levels of the minors, striking out just an insane amount of time, but we kept... Uh, Kept with it with him, uh, continued to try to invest heavily in player development and continue to invest heavily in our coaching staff. And he's finally broken through uh, first full season in the majors this year, 267 average, 39 homers, 90 runs driven in and 13 steals, added up to a 143 WRC plus and a 3.8 war a very competent uh, corner outfielder and also a guy who can play a pretty solid first base at 6-4. Reichert is kind of locked into that position right now, but if we ever want to move Reichert to DH, feel like between the likes of Juan Toledo and Jamari Habersham, we've got some uh, pretty solid defensive first baseman waiting in the wings. So as I think about... Uh, what we're going to do this offseason with this team, I'm kind of okay going with two or three of our younger shortstops on the roster next year. If there's a monster shortstop who happens to be available in the trade or the free agent market, it's something to consider. Are we going to move on from Ramirez? If we do, what can we get in return for him? And then who will back up Banks? We've got a couple guys in AAA who I think are more than capable of being backup catchers. Uh, but could we get something interesting in return of a trade from of Ramirez or somebody else that's a uh, younger catching prospect who could uh, maybe push Banks for the starting job down the line? That's something for us to think about as well. Feel like we are pretty well set at the rest of the positions, first, second, and third, DH, and all the outfield spots. You could argue we might have one player too many for those spots right now. So don't think there's necessarily going to be a lot of heavy lifting this offseason in terms of the everyday players. And it's uh, not the worst thing in the world that we don't think we need to do a lot of heavy lifting because we've uh, got less than $7 million available and no money available for extensions right now. So unlikely we're going to be significant players in the free agent market. Turning our attention now to our excellent pitching staff, uh, Chris McClintock, our closer, had a brilliant year, 0 0.93 ERA over 68 innings, 45 saves, 80 strikeouts, a uh, Ridiculous 462 ERA plus and a similarly ridiculous 52 FIP minus. Uh, he had a couple of issues in the playoffs. Uh, the one knock on him is that he doesn't have great movement on his pitches and he can give up some home runs. Uh, he gave up three home runs during the regular season. I think he may have given up that much or even more in the playoffs. Um, I gave up exactly three home runs in the playoffs as well. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, our backup catcher was a postseason hero uh, who went from three home runs in the regular season to three home runs in the postseason. Our closer was almost a postseason zero by going from three home runs allowed in the regular season to three home runs allowed in the playoffs. But fortunately, we were able to recover from uh, his missteps during the playoffs and ultimately clinch that third World Series title in four years. Floyd Auclair, our outstanding stopper, had some injury issues this year, missed close to a month, and uh, did end up costing him 
his chance at uh, leading the league in games for a fifth consecutive year. One of his teammates edged him out on that front, but he did lead the league in holds for a fifth straight year and struck out a silly 178 batters in 119 and a third innings with a 226 ERA. He has been a revelation in the stopper role for us since uh, we moved him into that role after his first year with us when he was in the starting rotation. Moving on to some of the setup men in the middle relievers, Danny Kashuk is a guy we picked up in a trade a uh, couple years ago at this point, and he has been an excellent left-handed pitcher for us, 2.01 ERA over 40 and a third innings. Some of his personality traits are not great, low leadership, loyalty, adaptability, and intelligence. And he's getting to the point for a left-handed reliever who were only pitching 40, 50 innings a year to be making close to $5 million is definitely getting pricey. Uh, but he's so effective, we'll probably bring him back for another year. Luis Palencia, the right-hander, uh, another solid year from him, 258 ERA, over 45 and a third innings pitched. A guy who, as we've talked about for many years, can start for us if we need him to with his profile. Uh, but our pitching staff has generally been so good and so healthy that uh, we've never actually had to put him in that role at the major league level. Chad Aguirre, uh, another lefty who came up through our farm system. He led the National League with 78 games pitched this year, so he edged Eau Claire by one game thanks to the long time that Eau Claire had on the IL. A 2.10 ERA and 112 strikeouts over 85 and two-thirds innings, 26 holds, 7 wins, 3 losses, 4 saves. 204 ERA plus 57 FIP minus. He's still making the major league minimum. He will certainly be back with us next year. Could see bigger roles for Ari Caper and Joey Bills. Ari Caper, a fourth round pick from 2040, 189 ERA in 38 innings pitched this year. Our starting pitching was so healthy and so good, going five, six plus innings consistently that uh, we've struggled to find work for some of our relievers. Joey Bills, another guy who could start or relieve for us. His uh, second year in the majors had a 405 ERA, over 60 innings pitched. Still above average in terms of his ERA plus and fit minus, and think he will likely be a member of this pitching staff for years to come. Solano Toselli is a guy, another guy who could start or relieve a lefty. 339 ERA over 71 and two-thirds innings this year. Another good, solid relief pitcher that uh, on many teams could likely compete to be a starter or a closer, but our bullpen is very deep. Two guys who will be competing for roster spots next season. Uh, a couple more youngsters. Mike Jaramillo uh, was excellent in Albany with a 184 ERA over 53 and two-thirds innings and struck out 10 and allowed no earned runs in six and two-thirds innings in September. Chris Warrior also came up at the end of the year, had a 379 ERA in AA Albany, but no runs allowed in eight strikeouts in six and two-thirds innings of work for us. So both of those guys certainly in the mix to be in on the pitching staff next year as well. Turning to our starting pitching and our starters were a huge part of uh, what we did in the playoffs and what we did to get to the playoffs. Uh, Nehemiah Vidale signed as a free agent last offseason and we had to uh, make a number of roster moves to make it possible, but I think it definitely worked out. 19-6 and six record with a 2.81 ERA for us and a 6.3 war. Uh, he also was... Uh, Pretty good in the postseason, a 2-0 record with a 2.89 ERA and 36 strikeouts in his four starts. The guy who was uh, even better than him in, our po in the postseason is our former ace, Jim Lance, who bounced back from a disappointing postseason a year ago with a dominant postseason performance this year. 
For the regular season, he was 13-5 and with a 328 ERA, led the league in strikeout-to-walk ratio, and put up a 5-war. So a very nice season from Lance. And when we look in the playoffs a year ago, he was 1-3 and with a 579 ERA. He more than atoned for that this year. Uh, 4-0 and record helped lead the team to the World Series. 1.63 ERA and just 14 hits and one walk allowed in 27 and two-thirds innings this postseason. Danny Black is our number three starter. And he was 14 and 7 this year with a 366 ERA. Good solid season, not quite as spectacular as his rookie year, but still did a nice job for us. Another guy who was undefeated in the playoffs, 2 0 in three starts, although his ERA of 411 was a bit higher than what we saw from Mr. Lance and Mr. Vidale. Uh, likely number four starter next year. He was our number five starter for much of this year. Jim Coles, 13 and 8 with a 417 ERA. He was also undefeated in the playoffs, 1 and 0 in his two starts with a 2.25 ERA. So, uh, another guy who talent wise is not necessarily the most talented pitcher on our team i mean i think quite honestly when we look at his pitching ratings uh you could argue that he should be working out of the bullpen uh, but he does have that captain personality that's applicable when he's a starter so we want to probably keep him as our fifth starter next year it's possible that a caper or a bills or somebody like that will uh end up overtaking him and Coles will be back in the five spot. Do like that he's got a five pitch arsenal of above average pitches. I uh, think he is likely to remain a very solid pitcher for years to come. And the reason that we are talking about a spot being available in the pitching staff next year is that Alexis Barajas has likely pitched his final game in Buffalo. Uh, he had a really nice year this year, 14 and 7 with a 3.98 ERA, led the league in fewest walks per nine innings. But his ratings have definitely deteriorated. He's still very strong physically. He's an Iron Man, still has good stamina, good at holding on runners. But you look from the beginning of this season to the end, his stuff dropped by 10 points, his movement dropped by 5 points and he's lost five miles an hour on his fastball. So we had a $22 million option for him for next season, which we've already declined. He is willing to talk an extension, so it looks like he does want to continue playing. I did make an offer to him that I'm not going to submit in the uh, contract tutorial video that I was talking about earlier. He was looking for over $10 million a year for four years. It looks like he would sign with us for $9 million a year for three years. But given that we have uh, so much outstanding depth in this pitching staff and we're likely going to have people who are capable of pitching for 31 other teams in the majors, uh, likely ending up in AAA for us next year because we have such strong pitching depth. I think it's unfortunately time for us to move on from Mr. Barajas. So we'll take a look at what the only player who is a member of all six of our world championship teams accomplished in his career with us. And in the postseason, he was basically the same excellent guy he was during the regular season. 17-9 and record with a 3.38 ERA over over 218 innings in the postseason in his career for us he did not end up making the postseason roster this year uh, which a little torn on but when I think about it with my brain rather than my heart he really didn't deserve to be on the team I noticed earlier I showed you earlier the um, kind of change in his pitching ratings and the deterioration that's taken place and it uh, really shows up in his stats for the first four months of the season he was putting up ERAs in the threes and twos August it ballooned to 568 and then September 666 so I think it's fair to think that perhaps his ratings aren't even going to look as good as they do now 
by uh, the time it's six months from now and the new season is ready to begin. Over the course of his regular season career, he won a Cy Young Award for us in 2036, and between his first three and a half seasons in Miami and then his long run in here uh, in Buffalo with us, you can see he is an 11-time All-Star, and he also was a Wild Card Series MVP for us in 2043. Led the league in wins with 18 a couple of times, and actually had 18 wins two other times in his career. His Cy Young Award winning season in 2036 led the league with a 239 ERA while going 17 and 7 with a uh, career high 221 strikeouts. Had a league best 76 FIP minus in 2042. And even these last two seasons, as he's gotten older, he's led the league in fewest walks per nine innings each of the last two seasons and still put up wars of over three. So you look at his career, and he's got a 68 war, um, 249 wins, 128 losses, and a 335 ERA, 123 ERA plus, 83 fit minus. It has been a very good career for Barajas. We gave up a lot to bring him on board, uh, but we felt like we needed an ace pitcher to help the team progress to the next level. And uh, even in that first year with us, 2034, when we brought him on board midway through the season and paid a high price for him, although he wasn't great uh, in that transition, that was our first World Series championship year, and he proved to be a difference maker uh, that year and many years in the future. So he's had a great run for us, uh, team record, 207 wins. Uh, pretty much he is like Deshaun Seifu in terms of the team records for pitchers. Uh, he's been here longer than anybody else, and he's been better than anybody else most of the time that he's been with us. So a fantastic career by Mr. Barajas, but he will not be back with us next year. As I mentioned, I think we've got plenty of depth in the pitching staff to replace him. And uh, with the money he's looking for, I just don't think it's logical to bring him back. I'd hope that he would retire, but given that he's looking for a uh, 10 plus million a year over three or four years, I have a feeling he's going to uh, try to sign with somebody and continue his career. And we wish him good luck, uh, but I don't think he's going to be nearly effective uh, in the future as he has for us over the course of his excellent career in Buffalo. And with the summary of our uh, team's performance on the field complete, we'll also take a quick look at our farm system. Made a little progress from the beginning of this year to the end of the year. We now rank 23rd overall. Uh, talk through some of our pitchers and our hitters, and there's a lot of incredible talent on our major league team now that's kind of in their first second or third seasons that was on this list a year year and a half ago so our farm system not ranked nearly as high with uh, the fact that most of the top talent has graduated to the majors that said we still have four top 100 prospects led by Caleb Kreveling He's a player we picked in the first round in 2044, finally made it out of rookie ball this year, and he combined to go 13-6 and six between A ball and high A ball, uh, well above average ERA pluses and fit minuses at both levels. Not quite ready for the majors yet, but he is only 21 years old. Look at his ratings relative to the Eastern League and think he'll likely be starting next year in double A. He's the top prospect in our organization, number 37 in all of baseball. Dan Glazuski, a third-round pick from that same draft, finally promoted him to A-ball this year. He had never really excelled in rookie ball, but just felt that as a guy who was closing in on 21 years old, needed to get him to a different change of scenery. Uh, he did hit 287 in 101 at-bats in A-ball. Only three home runs, though, still developing his home run power. Uh, we think he can be a good home run hitter, but hasn't really completely filled out yet. But that 110 WRC plus that he put up in A-ball, which is the 
best number we've seen from him in his four-year minor league career does give us uh, some hope that two or three years from now he could be in the mix to help us as a corner outfielder in the major leagues. Caleb Leamy, a first-round pick in 2045, 21-year-old, has been dealing with some injury issues, only pitched three games this year, 1-0 with a 1.65 ERA in that small sample size. Uh, he's gonna, he is 21. He'll be closing in on 22 um, next summer. So he will likely be starting next year in A-ball. Still has a lot of work to do on his control. He walked a ridiculous 16 batters in the 16 and a third innings he did pitch for us this year. Uh, he atoned for it by only allowing eight hits. But uh, that type of strategy is probably not going to work in the majors. And we're going to have to have him uh, walk fewer batters going forward. Ezekiel Salazar is our final top 100 prospect, an international free agent signing from over five years ago. Split the year between High A Jamestown and Double A Utica. Combined for 20 homers and 71 ribbies between the two levels. Not a dominant offensive performance from him, uh, but is 22 years old. With what we think he can become, I still think he can be a pretty interesting major league player. Um, the issue is we just need to start seeing some development and some improvement in some of those batting ratings. We think his uh, ceiling is pretty high, but uh, it's going to have to start coming through on the field one of these years. We've also got three more prospects ranked in the second 100. Uh, Sergio Cisneros, an international free agent signing from uh, two and a half years ago. Finally promoted to rookie ball this year, 5-3 and three with a 6-12 ERA for our DSL team. Did strike out 102 batters in 60 and a third innings, uh, but he did walk 60 batters as well. So still very raw, gave up nine home runs. Uh, he's got a lot to learn, but if he's able to uh, harness his potential and learn that change up in the knuckle curve, could be a pretty interesting pitcher down the line. Certainly not guaranteed. Ron Sedano was our first round pick this past year, a potential two-way player, three and four with a 930 ERA, uh, getting his feet wet in the professional ranks. Taking a look at his batting stats, uh, he was eight for 37, hit 216 for us. Um, View him as a guy who could be a big, uh, could be a good back end of the rotation pitcher, maybe a fourth or fifth starter. And looking at his ratings, uh, we still think he's a bat that could hit with some power, and he's a very interesting glove for the infield. So, still think he's got potential to be an interesting player. Hopefully, we can start seeing more production next year in his second minor league season. And our final top 200 prospect is Jesus Heredia who we picked uh, in a supplemental pick in the first round this year. He hit 307 with two homers and 12 ribbies and 114 at-bats in rookie ball for us. Probably will still be in rookie ball next year. Um, only going to be 20 years old, but it's not inconceivable if he continues to play well that he could be uh, promoted to Class A as a 20-year-old next year, which would be uh, reasonably... Good movement up and through our system. You can see the rest of the top prospects in our system here and what they did last season for those of you who are looking rather than watching. But we will uh, stop talking about those guys uh, and move on for a very quick look at some of our former players and what they did this year. And with the number of our former players that we uh, picked up and had on our team at various points this year in terms of uh, Juan Romero, who we talked about, uh, Mr. Flores, the first baseman, Bobby Bolig, this list of former players is a little smaller than it's been in the past. Uh, Luis Coma Duran, 249 and 23 homers for KC. He was making a lot of money with the young outfielders we had on the way, still very content to have traded him away. Steve Anderson, 226 average for the Diamondbacks. Uh, not a big-time offensive player anymore at the age of 36. 
Jim Andrews, former shortstop, hit 265 with 15 homers for the Dodgers, uh, the best season he's had in his last three. Alejandro Contreras, another former infielder, hit just a buck 93 in 270 at bats in the majors. Joe Edwards, uh, 207 average and three homers and 121 at bats. The 38 year old is likely nearing the end of his career, although has not officially retired yet. Daniel Rojas uh, continues to hit very well since we moved on from him. Uh, he was in his late 30s looking for an extension. We knew that we had Riker on the way, so we moved on from him. But he has uh, really maintained his performance well into his 40s at this point. Um, thought that that contract with Seattle could have uh, turned out bad, and he's now played through it. Now, they have signed him to a three-year, $73.6 million extension for his age 41, 42, and 43 seasons. So it's conceivable that they uh, come back to regret that, but uh, can't criticize what he's done in the three years since he left us uh, with over 30 homers each year and 151, 156, and 130 WRC pluses. Uh, not everybody gets young early, um, but you look at his contact rating and his home run power, and it's not what it used to be. Strikes out a crazy amount of times. Uh, his bat's been great since we let him go, but we've won the World Series two out of the three years since we let him go, so there's no, uh, no disappointment on that front on our part. Juan Estrada could be nearing the end of his career. Looks like he suffered a torn UCL uh, in the playoffs for San Diego, out for 11 months, likely to miss almost all or all of next year. He was 12-9 and with a 331 ERA for the Padres, so a nice bounce-back year for the soon-to-be 41-year-old. But he's basically going to miss all of next year. Uh, will he be able to bounce back at age 42? Uh, batting wise, he's definitely not the hitter he used to be. 241 average and 291 at bats for the Padres for the two way player. But still a very nice career. A 23 war at this point as a position player and a 43 war as a pitcher will be a very interesting uh, vote for the Hall of Fame someday. Probably never was a Hall of Fame pitcher and probably never was a Hall of Fame hitter, but he was well above average in both of those disciplines and kind of a unique profile in the history of baseball. And we'll finish things off looking at a couple of our former pitchers. Uh, Ali Ostendorf, 10-12 and 12 with a 474 ERA for Atlanta. Eric Barbarito, 9-9 nine and nine with a 362 ERA for the Rangers. And Alexis Mendoza, 13-13, 13, 384 ERA for Houston after he left the Giants. So, so three former pitchers, um, Barbarito and Mendoza, were the ones who were with us in the majors. Really having... Um, good solid seasons uh, we've definitely focused on investing a lot in pitching depth and taking a lot of shots at high school pitchers in this playthrough it's generally worked out pretty well for us and uh, we've had enough pitching depth to let people like Barbarito and Mendoza go when they did qualify for free agency and uh, kept the guys that we wanted to like Barajas and Lance it's worked out well for them, uh, but or worked out well for us, but it's also worked out pretty well for those pitchers who are all having nice careers. And with that, it's time to really start thinking about the offseason. Uh, if you've got thoughts on what we should do, always helpful for me to hear. I don't think it's going to be a crazy offseason right now. I think the big decision we're going to have to make is do we bring back Ramirez or do we see what we can get for him in the trade market? I don't think we'll be bringing back Langley. Uh, we will be making offers likely to Kashuk and Habersham. Not going to submit a QO to Barajas. So uh, other than figuring out what to do with a large number of minor league free agents and then hoping that the uh, staffers and coaches that we've made offers to eventually join us, there's not a lot 
immediately for us to think about. Uh, just five arbitration eligible players may look to trade one or two of them away and uh, then we'll start preparing for free agency. But after the big move for Vidale a year ago, I think it's uh, pretty unlikely that we're going to be big players in free agency this year, even if we clear up some money from moving on from Ramirez. Uh, I think I'm likely inclined to boost our scouting and player development budgets a bit. Uh, so maybe a quiet off season, but we will find out in the next episode. Until then, Thanks so much for watching and hope you have a great day.